It's over a century ago, 1907, Nobel Prize winner and French experimental surgeon Alexis Carroll predicts that to revolutionize transplant surgery for humans, we need to use pig tissue intelligently. Now, over the years, many chimera-esque cross-species transplants have been attempted. And I don't know if it's what Carol had in mind when in the 1920s, Sergei Voronov actually implanted chimp testicles into elderly men to try and rejuvenate their zest for life. Maybe more in line with Carol's thinking was in the 1960s, just three years before the first successful human transplant, when James Hardy put a chimp heart into Boyd Rush. Um, now, it wasn't successful, it was hyperacute rejection, the heart only beat it for one hour, and uh, the patient never regained consciousness. But, I mean, he was barely conscious to begin with. Um, because he was comatose before the operation and his sister actually needed to sign the consent form which did mention it would be the first ever heart transplant uh, but not that it would come from a chimp. Or in 1984 when Leonard Bailey tried to implant a baboon heart into baby Faye and unfortunately there was also acute rejection there but because baby Faye was blood group O uh, which is the most common blood type in the West uh, and it exists in all, less than 1% of baboons, so there was a incompatibility there. Now, there have been also many other notable attempts in history, but fast forward to January the 7th, 2022, and in some Hogwarts-esque magic fashion, the first ever pig-to-human transplant occurred in David Bennett. So, why a pig? And where did it succeed where the previous ones failed? Will he ever eat bacon again? And did we go too far? So this video is going to be a whistle-stop tour on all of those things. My name is Sarah Med, I'm a doctor, I work in London, I make videos on health, hit sub if you like that kind of thing. So you probably know this already, but what is the need? Well, thousands of people actually die each year waiting for transplant organs and the level of human, uh, both live and cadaveric uh, transplants available are nowhere near the amount of demand. And the demand is growing exponentially as well. Like for example, in the UK, the adults requiring a heart transplant have gone up by double in the last 10 years only. Um, and the number of donors has remained approximately static. So we need to serve that need in some way because only about a quarter of people on the transplant list end up getting transplanted. So pigs would be an excellent way to do that if we can just make the transplant work. So where did this operation succeed that others had failed before it? Well, there are two main issues with cross-species transplantation and they are acute rejection and transmission of infection like you know, multi-resistant bacteria and viruses, etc. So in terms of rejection, you've got gene editing therapy, which has exploded massively in recent years, CRISPR-Cas9, which allows you to modify, knock out, um, and create pigs which express or don't express certain proteins that you want. So there's this gal protein on the surface of vascular endothelial cells, which leads to rejection. And so back in 2001, they created a, a gal knockout pig, which uh, didn't express this protein and it was less likely to lead to rejection. And uh, they've also taken human proteins which um, regulate the clotting cascade and also reduce the uh, kind of antibody response. Um, and they've put them inside the pig DNA. So it, there is really a chimeric animal now. <clears throat> in terms of the infections, they actually breed these pigs in, in labs which are kind of under sterile conditions. And uh, they've tested this because like back in 2016, this lab in Maryland actually took a pig heart from one of these genetically modified pigs and they put it in a baboon for three years and they managed to keep it alive for all of that time. Um, they actually didn't take the baboon heart out. They just left it uh, living inside this baboon's abdomen. Um, so it had been tested beforehand. So why would they use a pig and not a baboon or some other animal. Well, pigs 
heart is much more similar to the size of a human's heart and actually gets that size in about six months, whereas a baboon takes nine years to reach its maximum size and it's still a little bit too small. Uh, their pigs are much more readily available and uh, they have also way less maintenance costs. Um, as you can imagine, pigs don't need to swing from trees, with the notable exception of spider pig. Spider pig, spider pig. We also have better gene technology for them. They're less likely to transmit infection. And I saved the best to last, which is the litany of pig jokes that come along with <laughs> pig transplants. So what are the ethical implications with this kind of surgery and operation? Well, you know, exactly the same as the debate between crispy and chewy bacon. People sit on two sides of the fence and generally the issues are one of a few and they can generally be split into dangers with the tech, animal welfare issues and whether this technology is something we should be dealing with at all and we'll kind of go with that one by one. In terms of dangers of the tech, like what kind of viruses, what kind of infections are we gonna see with this transplant technology? Will the individual live for long enough? Um, would they have been better off without the transplant at all? And also about the person, would, would they feel different now having a heart from a different species? These kinds of issues are difficult. I'm just asking the question. I, I mean, I don't necessarily know what the answer is. In terms of animal welfare, there, there is a big issue. Like, obviously some people will say, and many have said this on social media, that if you're okay with meat, then you would be okay with kind of raising animals for transplant, which would be used to save someone's life. Um, but can may not necessarily be as simple as that. There's this, argument that as long as you allow the animal to be the animal, you keep them their telos in kind of the Aristotle viewpoint, then it will be okay. But you know, if you look at traditional farming conditions, then usually they don't actually allow the animal the space to do those kinds of things. But if you take an animal and you put them in sterile conditions where they can't socialize with other animals or go outside or any of those, then maybe you have extra um, ethical problems and things that I'm sure will improve with time um, as the technology becomes more available and you get more funding, um, but certainly something we need to consider. And then, you know, one of the last things is people make this argument like, you know, should we be doing this kind of thing? You know, are, are we playing God? We're altering nature. but. You know, if you say that about this kind of thing, then why doesn't it apply to, let's say, you know, building a dam on the River Nile or um, killing pathogenic insects or any of the other multitude of things that we do to alter na nature to be able to survive? The other thing as well is that if God didn't want us to use this technology, then why would he make it available to us to, so that we physically could alter this DNA? And many the and many theologians who support the use of biotechnology make this exact same argument. So that's a whistle-stop tour really into using pigs for transplantations into humans. Uh, sorry for hogging your attention during that one. And I hope you did enjoy the video. You got something useful out of it. Comment below, what do you think about this whole transplantation thing? And if you did enjoy this video, I'm sure you will enjoy some of my others. So make sure to follow them over here uh, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, uh, stay happy, stay healthy, all the best.